I mean, it wasn't that hard to find. So, who was the first team you played for? It was Exiles, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah the Exiles played. I, believe. I don't remember what the youth league was. Was it five on five or seven on seven? I think it might be five on five. The youth league. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, like it was in the summer five on five. So then, when you came over here, did you think the sport was as serious as it was over in America? No. I just, the only thing I knew that people, people knew of the game, but I didn't think people played it like that. When I came and I seen how they had different levels, like youth, and then the under-19s, and then the seniors, I was like, oh yeah, they're taking it serious. And then Is that your initial do. of it? Oh, uh, yeah. And then when I see what they do during, uh, like in, in West End, or in the, when the NFL UK comes over for their game, for the four games a season, or whatever they do, then I was like, oh yeah, they like this. So, I actually played for Renegades as well, but I played the year before you joined. So I had left and gone to uni. So we were never on the same team. Um, but I actually saw you play. Um, yeah. Do you know, I would be on the sidelines talking with Steve, and then all Steve would be like, oh, you just give the ball to Tiggy, give the ball to Tiggy, give the ball to Tiggy. That's all I would hear. Um, there was one against Warriors, so I went to that one. Um, there was a couple other ones, but obviously I didn't live in London at the time, so I wasn't really around. Yeah. Um, but back to my point was, so obviously you were like a big part of like the team, and I saw like you never like blamed like the team, your teammates, or like your refs or that kind of thing. So what kind of gave you that confidence to say, oh, okay, I can put the team on my back and I can do this and I can do that? I mean, just like you said, Steve said you know, on the sideline, you say, give me the ball, he put trust in me. So, I mean, the producer, if you're going to do that, I just have to do it. Good point. So, so you had always had faith that you're a baller, yeah? I mean, yeah, my teammates, my teammates too would tell me, so it would, it would help. And I had some guys on the team that were really good too, so I felt like we were a good team. Yeah, because um, I don't know if you remember Steven, he went on to play GB. Um, Steven, Steven the receiver? Yeah, yeah, he went on to play yeah, GB he, receiver, then he busts his ACL. Yeah, that's why he was good. Yeah, he's good now. Um, Andy's now played, gone to GFL. Um, who else would have been on the team with you? Ade, Ade still plays, but he actually injured his back recently. So he's been out, yeah. but he's been doing well yeah. for himself. Kunle was good too. Yeah, Kunle is retired actually. Really? Yeah, yeah what, Kunle is only what, 20? He's like, like the same age as you. Like 22, 23. Like, he's too young. He's too young to put those pads back on, man. Nah, he's, he said he's not. He's, he can't commit and stuff. Or and he said, if he's not getting paid, he doesn't really see the point. That's fair. That's so fair. I can't really argue with him. Yeah, that's fair. So obviously, you played a while here. Um, who would you yeah. say is the best British player you played against? I guess. Yeah. Ah, uh, all these questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, against. Uh, I'm thinking of the best team that we play, which would be the Blitz. So, yeah, because yeah, they had like some real big O alignment. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Can we, let's come back to that question. <laughs> let's come back to that. Right. So tough, obviously, bro. like I said before, I saw you playing. You played all over the field. You played in safety, linebacker, running back, receiver. I think at one game yeah. I even saw you play a little bit of QB. No, I played a couple games. I did a couple games. I played QB. <laughs> so, what made you players, play, bro? Um, in safety. Safety? I'm always yeah. like safety. So, I'm, it's always been my favorite position because I grew up. Like, I grew up watching like Sean Taylor, Edry, Troy, guys like that. And it just made me love the position. I've always wanted to play. I always wanted to play either safety or running back. You know, two favorite positions. Um, so, obviously, you went to like Filton and stuff. So, Filton is like. I don't know if you've heard like yeah. NFL Academy, um, but in Bristol, did they ever yeah, give yeah. you dreams of saying you can go to NFL or, or did you already think you can make it to NFL before that? Before I went to Philton? Yeah. I'm going to be real, bro. No, I didn't. I mean, I, I went there. I was hoping to, I was hoping that it would be something to be like a foundation for me to move to play at the next level. But when I got there, I found out it wasn't that. So, I mean, that's, 
Right. So did you have that with Renegades or did you get that kind of feeling when you went moved on? When I went to the Renegades? I'm gonna tell you something. If it wasn't for Steve, I wouldn't be playing in the NFL right now. 100 percent Because at one point I I was I was gonna quit. I was gonna quit playing. And you know, in the summertime, uh Steve told me about a camp that was up this far away in camp. I don't remember, but it was just like doing drills and then 707 stuff like that. And when I went there, that's when I seen Adam, who was the interim coach with Dallas at the time. And then uh, me and him started communicating. And then, I mean, the rest is history. Yeah, because Steve actually talks about you a lot. Um, even go, I think even some of the kids have now messaged you saying, oh yeah, I heard about your story, free Steve, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. Some of them like proper excited that you even messaged them back. It's like, oh, right, I got, it's this guy, actually, one of them said you went because I know you went Archbishop Tennyson's and you went to, yeah, yeah. with one of his cousins. So it's like, oh, uh, now, now he feels like uh, he knows like um, like LeBron James and that kind of stuff. Nah, that's crazy, right? Just a regular guy, man. He's just a regular guy. I just kept grinding on my dream and ended up where I wanted to be. That's all. I'm just a regular person like everyone else. So, so that was a regular to another fight. So even your Instagram's called, what's it, Humble Beast? So yeah. what keeps you so humble? What keeps me humble? Um, I mean, just understanding that I'm, I don't control everything. There's only certain things I can control. So, I mean, I just know what I have to do and don't worry about anything else. So nothing else really gets to me. So I feel like that's what keeps me really grounded. Obviously, you're now in the NFL. You said obviously you used to, you were going to quit. So, what yeah. advice would you give yourself back then? Uh, back then, um, just like understanding what grind is. Because before, I would just think that you could just show up and you could just play every week. You would just show up on Sunday or whatever the day the game is and just play. But once I understood that I had the chance to go to the NFL, I was, you know, training, doing my training five days a week and just trying to improve on like technique because it isn't just it isn't just skill like you would never survive just off skill so saying that before you made it into nfl or let's say even went to america um yeah. what would you say you thought it would take to get into the nfl so let's say maybe i don't know two three training days a week a couple in the gym or whatever um what it would My mindset when I go into training is just consistency. So, I mean, I don't have to go in every day and kill myself two days a week or three days a week. But if I go five days a week and improve 1% every day, I know eventually over time I'm going to improve. So is that the mentality you have now that you're in the NFL? Yeah, no, yeah, I still have that. I still, but now I, I'm a little bit more intense with what I do because I have, I mean, my goals have, I mean, I have greater goals now, so I feel like I have to go a little bit harder, but that's just me being hard on myself. So talking about training, what does yeah. your diet look like um, in the off-season compared to during the season? Um, in the off-season, I try to eat a little bit more cleaner, less fast food. Um, I actually, this year, I, one of my goals is learning how to cook, so I learned how to cook a little bit. <laughs> I got like five or, six, five or six meals I can make, so I mean, you got no better yeah. time now that you're in quarantine to learn how to cook. Nah, that's the only thing we have is time, and there's no like I can't go out to eat, so I have to learn how to make something. Well, at least yeah. two meals for myself. You might be with like some of my friends in yeah. um, in uni. One of them must have gone and splashed it all on like Balenciagas and Gucci stuff, and then he didn't have any yeah. money for food, so he started making cabbage sandwiches, and I just had to laugh at him. <laughs> Bro, that's how it gets when you don't have no money, bro. You just have to make use of whatever you have. All right, so you said, um, uh, obviously, when you went to that training camp, you met one of the yeah. Dallas coaches and so on. And yeah. then from there, you went to IMG Academy, wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah. I watched, I saw, oh, what's the series in NFL now that you're in? Um, it's not on draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, Und undiscovered. Yeah, Undiscovered. So what are yeah. the facilities like over there? Oh, bro, it's crazy. It's a high school. It's so crazy, bro. It's like, it's like a professional place. They have everything from mental health coaches, 
to dietitians, strength coaches. And these kids are, I see these kids in the gym 15, 16, stronger than me, bro. And they're lifting heavy weights. Like, oh, yeah. But yeah, bro, it's crazy up there. It's one of the craziest facilities I've ever been to. So obviously you mentioned mental health and mental health is like a big thing, especially in um, NFL now. Um, yeah. What kind of stuff were they doing with you over there? As in at IMG? Yeah. So they were just training, they were kind of training you what kind of mindset you should have when you're approaching sports. To be, to be an athlete, you have to have a different kind of mindset because sometimes you might make a bad play or you might mess up something and you have to, the game keeps going anyway, so you have to move forward from that. And there's different ways you could do that by like breathing. That's why coaches have timeouts, things like that. So just teaching you how to have the right, right, right mindset approaching the game. So would you say having um, a short memory is key in America for all? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, you have to, because I mean, the play, the game is still going in 60 minutes in a game. And there's a next play, every time there's a next play. You might go three plays, get off the field, and you have to come back on another three plays. And if you're still worried about the mistake that you made 10 plays ago, then you're going to mess up the next play. And then you just have a bad game, complete bad game. But you can always change the game in the middle of the game, depending on how your mind is. So what I find, especially with American football, so that, that kind of mentality, having a short uh, memory, helps because yeah. unlike in soccer, you can have a lot of stops and starts. So now yeah. in that stop, your coach will be like, oh, you did this, you did that, blah, 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 yeah. blah. So there's a lot more time for you to get critiqued and you have film, yeah. all that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. And in the NFL, they have even iPads on the sideline that you can see, the, you can actually see the play that you messed up on. So corrections get made quickly. So next time you get back on the field, it's correct. It. So what was like an average day at IMG like? An average day? There was no average day at IMG. It was tough, <laughs> bro. It was, it was tough. 12 weeks. It was 12 weeks of intense trade and it was tough. Um, so we would have something called com um, combine movement, which would do like, we were going to have a pro, eventually we are going to have a pro day after the 12 weeks of training. So this combine movement would um, train us to do the different drills, like the three cone, um, the agility drills. And then we would go have lunch and then we would go to a film session to either break down film on games or break down the film of what we did in training the previous day. And then we would go in the field and train again. And then some days we would have yoga. Um, we would do the mental health exercises. Um, some days um, we would meet with the dietitians and go to like the grocery store and see the uh, things that we need to, the foods that we have to buy when we're living on our own to actually cook like healthy meals. And yeah, just things like that. But so go back to the food. So obviously, it took you shopping. Did you take yeah. that food home to try and cook? To try and cook? Yeah. Nah. See, I only, bro, that was two, that was two years ago and I only just learned how to cook this January, like six months. <laughs> oh, no. I was still just buying food. If I was hungry, yeah, I was just buying food. To be fair, food. I'm trying to get teach my little brother. He's only 16 and now we're in lockdown. He's like, oh, all well, I've got is cereal or like chips that I can make or like sandwiches. And now, now he knows how peak it is for him. Bro, it take, this is what it took for me to realize, yo, I need to learn how to cook. And I'm too old to be living by myself and still buying food three meals a day. So now I have, I can make chicken wings one day, make something else the next day. It's just not that bad. Day. My dad just learned how to make fried eggs. like two years ago. Funny enough you say that, I don't think my dad knows how to cook to this day. My dad's 50. I don't think my dad knows how to cook. <laughs> my, dad makes, my, dad, my, dad, my dad makes, every time he cooks, he makes the same meal every time. I don't think my dad knows how to cook. Yeah, so when I was younger, my dad used to try and cook for me and stuff. And then um, what he'll do is like, if you don't like it, tell me, because I'm not trying to kill you, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so let, let's say any young athletes or young players, um, what advice would you give them to try to get into a similar position that you're in? I just stick to the grind, bro. Like I said, when I was young, I was I was gonna quit. And if I if I did quit, I wouldn't be here today. So just stick to it. If you have a dream, just keep grinding towards it. Because sometimes when you have big goals, you and you don't get immediate results, you feel like you aren't moving anywhere. But like I said, one percent every day is gonna do something for you. It really good. So seeing that um, the position that you're in now. Do you still think that you have things to prove to yourself? Yeah, I have so much thing. I still have to play on Sundays, bro. Like, there's so many goals I have for myself that I haven't reached yet. And every time I achieve a goal, I'm making new ones. So, I mean, it's just never going to be ending. So, going from IMG to the NFL, 
what would you say you saw was the biggest difference? Um, in terms of training or what? So in terms of, so let's say facilities or um, like friendships that you would have, that kind of thing. Uh, facility wise, like I said, IMG is crazy, bro. Have you seen? Have you seen pictures of it? I, I, I've seen. I saw. I've seen IMG. Oh, yeah, seen even their, their team is like ridiculous. Oh yeah, it's crazy. They tra their travel team. I think they have one of the best high school teams in the in the country. But you seen the video? They it's crazy, bro. They have like twelve different fields, a track. They have everything there, bro. But um, from what I've seen in the NFL, it might be nicer than the NFL, really. In terms of facility wise, yeah. That's yeah. high school. Nah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent, bro. They put money into that. So would you say your transition from that to the NFL was easy? Um, it was easy because the way we were training there, intense twelve days, uh, twelve weeks, it, it was easy. Because we had we had a schedule. We would wake up early like we would in the NFL, wake up at like six AM, we'd have meetings, we'd have one or two things a day, train, lift. So it was it made it, the transition easy. So would you say, um, obviously, if, let's say people have watched um, like uh, All or Nothing, all that, those kind of shows, um, yeah. or the Rookie Hazen and all that kind of stuff, would you say it's still a good way to, you know, make friends and so on in the NFL? Um, what are you saying? Is it easy to make friends in the NFL? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like in the NFL, I mean, everyone's growing and everyone, people have a family, people have, some people have kids, everyone's living a different life. So, I mean, but once you come in there and like any team environment, once you come in, when you come in there and you go through training camp and you guys are grinding together, eventually you form relationships with people. So what kind of socials do you like? Do you like go that for like bowling or, or you can eat with linemen, we'll do, that kind of stuff? We'll do, yeah, we'll do bowling, um, go out to eat, um, play the game, just regular stuff, bro, really. I, when I came to the NFL, I thought we were doing some crazy stuff, but everyone's really living a regular life. So you didn't get your hair shaved off, or eyebrow gone? Nah, I don't even, if they, I don't know, if they came to me, it would be an issue. If they came to me with that, it would be an issue, because I don't know about that. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, because uh, in the UK, what's big is, so if you have an away game, especially if you win, they, may, they don't do like proper occasion, but they make everyone sing. I actually, I had to do it my first year when I went senior. I yeah. like, my singing is horrible. And I feel like Lion good. King. And obviously I didn't know the words. I started making up the words because they're not in English. So I just like blah, 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 blah. All that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Humans are sort of laughing for me for like two, three weeks. What team is that? Uh, I used to play for Olympians. Oh yeah. Did they do that in the What year did you play for Olympians? I've been playing for them since 2013. But I think the year that you would have been with Warriors, I was either not playing or I was away at uni. Mm. Wait, yeah, 2016 maybe? Yeah, that's the year I, I, I took a year off that year. Yeah, I think it was 2016. Yeah, I, I was injured, so I took that year off. I'm injured, boy. Speaking of which, how would, so obviously you played in America before you get some kind of injuries. What would you say yeah. is the best way to rehab? Rest, really. Just rest. Um, do something light, maybe. Um, but just rest, really. Like, I had a couple of injuries, and the only thing I did was rest. Rest and ice, rest and ice. You do know they've actually retracted the ice statement. Why? Um, they said it can actually keep the... Like, I don't want to call them gems, but like the bad things inside of that soil inside. Yeah. So the guy who yeah. made up a rice had actually retracted the statement. Really? When was this? This has been, it's been for a while. I, had to, I looked up and like some of my friends are um, into strength and conditioning and they were like, oh yeah, like there's been loads of research into it. Like it's actually bad like for whatever So, so what, should, what should you use? You should use heat? Yeah, so use heat or, and then, so like you were saying, like movement, so like doing something yeah. light would also help. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah swelling out. Yeah. Oh, so let's go to game good. day. What kind of music yeah. are you listening to? Uh, it, depends, it depends on what kind of music came out. But I'm, I'm listening to straight rap. That's it. Nothing, so what, you no got like a favorite? You got like a Rick Ross? Um, Meek, I would listen to Meek. Meek would be on my list. Um. So like I'm a boss. Um, 
Dreams and Nightmares. Dreams and Nightmares, the mixtape. Um, his albums. I'm, I'm thinking. You mean game day now? Yeah. yeah. So right, I say pre game. Yeah, right. You put your headphones yeah. in. What kind of music are oh, you? Oh yeah. Now I'm listening to. I was listening to Meat, Polo G, um, Major Nine. Um, Davies, but straight rap. I need something to keep my energy levels high. So, oh, you know, so, so you lived up here for a while. You, you're not going to bump no English music. You got. Who would, who would be good? You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Be good. You know what's crazy? When I was living there, I didn't listen to English music like that, bro. I, there's actually a I couple didn't, of kids um, but, I know from America. They're like, yeah. I've lived there for like a couple years, never listened to no English. I didn't, but there was a, there's a there's a couple tracks that I like, like a couple people that made a track that I like, like um, what's his name? Tion Wayne. Yeah, um, I like a couple of these tracks. Um, I listened to a couple heady one tracks that I like. That's it. That's the only people I really. I don't know, bro. Hey, I don't know too many Eddie One's a guy for me. If you ask me, I don't know too many people. Is he still making good music? I know he's making. When I was looking, yeah, at he just came out of prison. He dropped um, a song, Rose Gold, I think it's called, something like that. Yeah, got over I'm a million views on his own channel, so he's done alright for himself. I might listen. I might listen to it. I'm gonna listen to it. But let's get into the important question: What's your what? game day drip looking like? Game day? Yeah. It depends on how I'm feeling on the day, bro. Got my visor on. Oh, um, no, 100% visor, 100% mandatory. I might do, I might do a sleeve one day, maybe two sleeves. <laughs> um, the visor has to go. The visor is 100%, bro. That's you're gonna see me with that every game. So you're gonna be like Sean Taylor, no gloves, just tape, <laughs> or what you got going on? You got Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. I'm doing the no, the no gloves. Uh, uh. Uh-uh. No gloves isn't drip for me, bro. <laughs> that, isn't, that, isn't, that isn't drip. If you have if you have no gloves, that isn't drip. But I do the I do the gloves. Um, yeah, I do the I do the Nike. Um, that's it. But the visor has to be. It has to be. See, I I don't really like visors. You just once they they get mud or something on it, that's it done. Nah, see me, even if it's, if it's raining, if the weather's bad, I'm still having it. That's the drip. You have to. If you have the drip, you have to keep the drip. That's a shame. Fair enough, it. innit? Maybe I'm not a drip warrior like you, but I see, I oh, do yeah, what I man. can. See, I don't, I don't even wear gloves myself, so clearly I ain't got no drip. Nah, see, 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 they have to change that. They <laughs> have to change that. It make you feel different, I'm telling you. I, I can't catch, that's my excuse, innit? That's my excuse now. See, I, but I if you have the gloves, if you... <laughs> If you have the glove, at least you don't. Eat. When you have no gloves, you can make an excuse. Saying, yeah, that's that's what I use. Like, oh yeah, I, I don't have my gloves. gloves. I left them in my bag. I'm not gonna lie. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left the glove. Also, I'm a Ravens fan, so I'm not gonna wish yeah. you the best against us, but I wish you the best in general. So, appreciate that, bro. <laughs> appreciate that. I appreciate this coming on here with us. Um, no, I'm happy, bro. If you have a down, you can always give us it's a cool. shout. Steve's obviously yeah. a big fan of you. Talks about you, nah, I love. I love Steve. Like I said, if it wasn't for Steve, I wouldn't be here today. 100%. 100%. Yeah, Steve's trying to send out like, a couple of kids um, over to the States and whatever, trying to do whatever he can with football. Yeah. But if you're ever down, you can always Jesus. come and give us a visit because we actually run our own flag league or you can come down, run a Yeah, where are you on? Where are you, where are you, you training now? In Stockwell. So we we'll actually run a couple of sessions. I actually coach with Steve now at Renegades. So yeah. we have coach down with them. So you always come down. What's the, what's- What's the youth league like now? Is it still five on five or seven on seven? Um, it's five on five. Then junior league is nine on nine, and then obviously seniors eleven and eleven. Uh, so I'm things are different now. Like a lot of people getting into flag now as well. Yeah, the flag game is where it starts. You have flags fun. It's fun. You love flag. People that do flag will love it. Yeah, so at Big Kid, we recently do um, have like our own little flag league now as well. We really? Get people to come down and. Come. Steve actually refs that, but people think Steve's been bribed because sometimes he calls he call some mad calls, but we just have to let it slide. Hey, Lee, hey, Steve knows what he's doing. Like, Steve's intense, man. Right? When, Steve's, when Steve's on the field, he's intense. Yeah, uh, I like Steve. So I, I think I, I've obviously known Steve longer than you. Like, yeah. Almost 10 years now I've known Steve. Like, yeah. I've, Steve is what Steve gives you what he wants in it. 
He's a nice yeah. guy and he's always going to be that. He is. That's the thing about Steve. He's such a cool guy. I trained, but when I trained with him one time, I lifted in, um, at DTC one time. And bro, I was like, oh, Steve's intense. It was just me and him in the gym. Steve was intense. Yeah, I did that one time. I did that a few times on my off season from uni. I was like, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is ridiculous. So. Crazy. He pushes you. He really pushes you. So we did. Um, before we go, do you have any advice for like any upcoming players and whatever, what they should do? Or well, like I said, bro, just stick to the grind. That's the main thing. Because, I mean, sometimes goals seem so far away, but, I mean, if you're grinding towards something, you're going to get something back in return. This is how the world works, bro. Like, the more you put out good things, the good things are going to come back to you. So, I mean, just sticking to it is the main thing. 1% every day. Just don't think you one day you're just going to end up, wake up one day and you're going to be another the next day. No. I had to, I was grinding five days a week. I put in the time and the energy I needed to put into what I wanted to do and it came back to me. That's what happened. I mean, it didn't happen overnight. It took a while. I was grinding from, I found out I had a, the chance to go to the NFL when I was 18. And I didn't make it until I was 21. So that's three straight years of me working out five days a week until I actually made it. So that's that. I'm happy for you, obviously, you're in a good place, just maybe not the right That's team. Love, you could, you could love, just jump, jump over to Ravens, do a bit, bit over there yeah. for us. Nah, I don't know about that one, though. <laughs> but well, anyway, thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Um, hope you stay safe. If you ever come down that, to uh, London, you always come check us out. We're always happy to have you. 100. That's 100, bro. I'll see you later, man. All right, love, bro.